Hey, congratulations on this album, Soul Dissection Experiment. I mean, you really take us for a ride. I mean, you give us that opportunity to step into a world that we didn't think that it, it existed, but it does now because it's coming through your music. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. What what all went into this? Because this was not an overnight project. This really looks like that you put some real serious time into it. Yeah, it was um, a really big deal. So uh, I guess really, you know, I've written music for forever. Um, but I, I guess the real um, inspiration for a lot of this album was a point to where I was not able to... Um, I lost the ability to sing for like five years. Oh, man. Um, due to a vocal injury, I got sick and something happened when I got sick and yada, yada, yada. Um, I went to a bunch of ENTs and they couldn't figure it out. It was like, okay, well, let's, let's work on this. Is it acid reflux? Is it, you know, so long story short, I, I just, I kind of had to, to step back from music because I, I, my lightning rod was gone and, um, I was just figuring out life without music and it was not good. <laughs> well, I was going to ask because I, I believe that creativity is a totally dick addiction. And so when you stepping back from it for five years, I can't imagine what your heart was doing. Yeah, it was, it was really rough. And I've, I've always thought in terms of, of music, it's, you know, if I see something, it, it, it creates a, a musical picture for me, if you will. And it, um, it was really hard to like, to stuff that you know to stuff all those feelings and th this album is kind of like you know what i can't do this i can't do that like it, it's at the core of my being and i can't i can't do this but i had lost so much it's like how am i going to figure my way back into this thing with you know i i don't know if i can sing right. even before i wrote the lyrics i didn't know if i could sing again um I knew I was starting. I started this thing called strophonation um, that was recommended by a speech pathologist. Finally, I wish I would have seen the speech path a long time ago, um, but like way before I I did anything else because she she just she's like just sing through the straw and it felt good oh to my me. God. I'm like okay, and I did it for like a year, and then after I did that, I was like okay, something's happening, and <laughs> I really what I had to do is rebuild my my intrinsic muscles to to remember how to do things anyway if you if you knew how much the, those of us that use our vocals fear what you've gone through we fear it every day and so and you know you sharing your story teaches us how a to preserve our voice and b not to ever give up if something goes seriously wrong yeah i hope i really hope that somebody can can you know uh, help themselves through through my journey because i there is a way that i could have you know, it could have been maybe a year journey rather than like a five year journey. And I didn't know the way there. So I found my way back. You know, I think the album is better <clears throat> um, for it. Yeah. But also, you know, it, it was a rough time. One of the things that I picked up on very quickly in listening to it was the fact that I felt like that I was participating with it. You, you have this way of allowing our imaginations to become a part of it. Yes, that is something that's really important to me is is. I, I try and set the scene the best way I possibly can for, for my own purposes. Um, but I also try to immerse, you know, w with a lot of tactics, you know, to be able to, to have the listener immerse inside yeah. of the music and, and do what they want inside of it. You know, have it, have it guide you in, in the way that you want to be guided or need to be guided. Yeah, because I mean, right away, I'm thinking to myself, because I've really gotten into these these uh, VR goggles, and I'm thinking, my God, yeah. this album would be, oh my God, he's got he's got to figure <laughs> out a way to get into my goggles. <laughs> hey, uh, they they have that movie called uh, Honey, I Shrunk My the kids or whatever too so we could we could figure out a way to get inside of goggles <laughs> plus i think that cirque du soleil should be knocking on your door do you not think that you would really become a part of their story in, inside those little <laughs> tiny tents <laughs> yes actually that, that's great because <laughs> because there's so much of a story inside I mean, it's like every instrument is bringing their version of the story and it happens to just come together and and really bring out some harmony yeah, that's that's great. Thanks for saying that. Um, I do. I I spend a lot of time on this stuff to make sure that um, it 
number one, it's said in the way that that I'm trying to say it, or or that that feels good for me when it leaves. You know, as as I can just let it let it do its own thing in the world. Um, I take a lot of care. Uh, just every little piece means something to me, and every instrument means a different thing to my emo- emotional packaging. Yeah. You know, the guitars are mean something different than the drums do, and they all represent a, a large piece of me. Um, I hope this doesn't cross the line, but I'll tell you what, man. I, somewhere along the line, I'm feeling a Pink Floyd vibe from your music. Are you inspired by Pink Floyd? Uh, to be honest, not really wow. inspired by, um, but I know what you're saying because they... I think the care is is where we yeah. meet yeah. inside of yeah. that, and I I do like Pink Floyd, but I, I it wasn't part of my referencing for for this stuff. But I I think it's the care that went into the the crafting process. Yeah, because I could totally see this being presented like the wall was. In other words, people come yeah. not, not necessarily to see a concert; they come to be a part of of the event, and that's that's what I feel with this music. Yeah, exactly, and I I think. At the core of, you know, outside of myself, it's it's like I feel that we're all one anyways. Yeah, and if we yeah. can participate in the same thing, um, because we're all going through the same stuff, it, it major things can happen. You know, like I don't know why we we have so many differences, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I'll tell you what, when you, when you have the song Heartstring Symphony, I wish I would have been a fly on the wall when you, when you created the beginning of this. And I, and I have, have to wonder, was the mysterious kind of approach right there at the beginning when you were doing the song, or was it something that you added as you started bringing this song to life? It was really at the beginning. Um, really? Uh, yeah, the, the beginning guitar riff came first. And I was like, you know what, this this is the right direction for something that I'm I'm feeling. Um, and it was even at that point, it was like mysterious. I didn't know what I was feeling. Um, but taking that outside and and putting all the instrumentation together, I f- I feel like I got it right with this yeah. one. Not you know not like tuning my own horn, but it, I feel like the musical pieces came together in the way they they needed to to get you know some some sort of cryptic but very open vibe you know being a multi-instrumentalist is it is it a struggle with personalities because i mean i mean i i do so many different things and i believe that each one of the things that i do is a personality all its own but you're sitting there in front of all of those tracks with musical instruments right hey that that's that's a great question um no, uh, because the way I think of it, I think maybe in the beginning there there was a fight. It's like, okay, who do we need to be the shining star? <laughs> who, who who do we need? But but at this point, the way I've described it is, it's like um, I have a drum core vibe to it. Yeah. Nobody's really the shining star. The collective effort is. So it's like I don't. I I think I don't want the drums to be low in the mix. You know, I, I think that would hurt everything, but also that goes, you know, it's a collective effort with everybody to get um, the full, the fullest possible sound that you can um, for that immersion effect that you were talking about. I love your mantra. We truly are never who we were yesterday. I love that because I'm a, I'm a person that believes in being in the present and, and more listeners need to understand where that mantra comes from and how they can exercise it. I I agree. That was something that I, I hold that very close to my to my heart is to, you know, don't let the past uh, eat at you and don't let the future eat at you as well, because right now you have the opportunity to do something that that you can't in the past or in the future. You know, you can only work on it now. How do you deal with that, though, on a daily basis? I mean, are you, do you meditate or what, what's going on? Because, I mean, there's, there's so much going around us at all times. And because we are creative, we're a magnet, man. We, we pick up on everything. I I agree. And I think creatives have, have struggled with, with this a little more than... than um, I, can't, I can't really even say that. But I think creative people have, you know, a high antenna. Um, mm. Rick Rubin said it really well yeah. in his last book. I don't know if you read that, yeah. but it was... I, I've never been spoken to in such a way. I'm like, this this person is finally speaking a language that I, I have not been able to put into English. 
I've not been able to put it in any language that anybody can understand. And then I went through Rick's book and I was like, you know what? That's, that's, <laughs> he's, he's, if anyone wants to know about me, read Rick's book. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Who created that album cover? I mean, the reflection of the water. I mean, the leafless forest. I mean, the, the album cover itself, it, it, it needs to be on a wall inside a frame. Uh, I I really liked this. Um, so the I the concept I I came up with the concept um, with a friend. Uh, his his name is Brian. He works. Um, he owns this business called the Factory. It's called Creatives now. Um, but he he's just been a graphic artist that I've I've admired, and I, he was a singer in a band that I played guitar for for a little while too. Um, but he's just amazing, and I'm like, hey man, can you do this thing? It's like. I wanted him to come up with the concept. He's like, but you put so much into the music. Let's, let's go where you want to go with this. And it, he just, he just did a, amazing with all the reflective yeah, elements. Yeah. And, you know, we did have a refining process to it, but it, he makes it really easy. Well, it, it lives up to your, 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 you know, your definition of connection as well as expression. I mean, you, you've got a creative piece of that pie right there. And, and so, cause when you step into this music, boom, that, that, that listener isn't going away until the album is over. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I would hope because it is a, it, you know, it's meant to be a journey. It's not, it's not meant to be, you know, I, I don't, I take pieces of myself very very seriously um and i think this album is is one of those things that you know when you're in it you're in it it's 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 supposed to be that way well as that creative person how do you handle situations such as apple where people will go in and do different things with different cuts and they don't listen to it in in you know like in in a way of continuity they they they'll go oh i'll do track seven then i'll do track two and it's like ah it's from beginning to end that's that's the experience of this one yeah um honestly there's some of the songs are not in the chronological order that that they could be um and when i was doing the album of course you know we it's like i really love the process of building the album this song should go into this one it should blend this way you know we fade this in and i i really love that process but I've, i've had to kind of lose the i don't know i guess i would say ego i've had to lose the ego in that process through the new world mm-hmm. um i don't mind it that much as long as people are enjoying the music do you see some edm djs grabbing a hold of this and putting their own beat to it there are that's happened twice i knew um it. there's there was a guy that approached me very recently and um i don't know i i gave him the go-ahead to do what he wanted to mm-hmm. um and i'm not sure what song he was going to choose um but but yeah, I'm I'm I'd love to hear people's renditions because it's it's something they felt from it that's gonna take them on their own journey too. So I think that's really cool. What is your emotional journey like when you're putting these songs together? Because those bridges, man, I mean you you take us in, in so many different directions. But I mean it starts with you and we receive what moved through you. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> I definitely go through kind of like the typical tortured artist <laughs> route. A lot of it, it's, it's like sometimes it's hard to say all the things that I'm trying to say. Yeah. And most of the time I'm trying to say it before I even get to the lyrics. So I'm trying to say music and it's like, you know, I don't really have writer's block per se, yeah. but sometimes I can't find the right, uh, this I'm using this metaphorically, but, I can't find the right word musically. Right. So it's like, you know what, this, these drums, I, you know, I got to get something uh, with some 16th notes, but I don't want it to be inside of the, the kick or the hi hat. And sometimes the thing that it really needed was, you know, just another percussive element inside of that, that actually attached to my emotion. And when I can't find it, it's like, the, uh, I don't want to say I go through lengths to find it, but I, but I do. It's like, yeah. I'll try meditating uh, or I will try just, uh, hiking until I throw up or, <laughs> you know, uh, not sleeping for, for a couple days to, to just like hire my antenna and lower my antenna yeah, yeah. to try and attach to what, what's going on here. Because, you know, sometimes I'm just guided 
I, I almost feel like it's wrong if I try and guide the process yeah. too much. So I guess those things are like me trying to just, you know, higher the antenna and lower it higher. I should say raise. <laughs> Johnny Resnick of the Goo Goo Dolls uh, told me one day, he says, you know, writer's block is when you tell yourself that it sucks. And he says, well, you know what? Now I have to learn how to teach myself to suck and accept being, you know, in a sucky day. So, I mean, I, I love that, you know, that it's like, okay, so I suck today. Okay. I accept that. Continue. Yeah. And, and see you, you move through that mountain as well. You know, you let, you know, you're having a bad time. You keep moving. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's, that's good that he said that. Um, but but yeah it's the same thing you have to keep moving and with the way that i i view things it's like that's when i'm not having that great piece right there where it's not falling easily that's where i learn the most yep, yep. you know it's like about the process about myself about you know there have been pieces like that that i i just didn't write the song that i thought i was going to i i sometimes i will start from scratch yeah and i and it it'll always be better for it how do you put a live show together i mean if you if you're putting this much thought into the music itself i can't believe what you would be doing for a live show yeah so um initially it was it it's normally written for like a five-piece band so yeah. i didn't i was singing only live um before with two guitar players bass player and a drummer and um, we're going to go as a three piece right now oh. to see if we can get the largest collective effort with minimal membership. Um, because it, it is really hard to, to keep people on board. Yep. Um, you know, it, I'm, I'm not a rich person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's really hard to keep people on board when they're not writing the music. Right, right. Where can people go to find out more about you, Alan, and the band? Because, I mean, they, they need to find you, they need to listen to you, experience you, and then give you a bunch of love. Uh, thank you. Um, you can find me at, at changingthedesign.com, Facebook, Changing the Design, Instagram, Changing the Design. So basically, if you just type in Changing the Design in your browser, just anywhere, you'll you'll find us. You can find us in all the streaming platforms as well. I love it. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. I love your story, and it needs to be shared, dude. Uh, thank you so much. I, I, I would love to come on. Thank you. you. Be brilliant today, okay? You too.